when you are excited about something or you really want to attend to something, it literally brings about a narrowing of the aperture of your visual window and your auditory window so that you attend to this particular location in space. We have an aperture or a window on our focus. Mental focus follows visual focus. Is there advice you have for how to achieve focus? First of all, we have to distinguish between modulators and mediators, and I'll do this very briefly. There are a lot of things that will modulate your state of focus, but they don't directly mediate your sense of focus. So for instance, if right now a fire alarm went off in this building, it would modulate our attention. We would get up and leave. It would be very hard to do what we're doing with that banging in the background, at least at first. So it's modulating focus, but it's not really involved in the mechanisms of focus, right? Now, in terms of things that mediate focus, it's very clear that mental focus follows visual focus, provided that you're a sighted person. Much of the training that's being done now in China to teach kids to focus better literally has them stare at a target, blinking every so often, but really training themselves to breathe calmly and maintain a tight visual aperture. When you read, you have to maintain a tight visual aperture. You're literally scrolling like a highlighter in your mind's eye, right? It's kind of obvious once you hear it. So for people that have problems focusing, sleep well, learn to dilate and contract your visual field consciously. This can be done if you practice it a little bit. As I said before, it is very hard to get into a state of focus like a step function immediately, like snapping your fingers. What you can do is you can pick any object, but ideally an object at roughly the same distance placed at roughly the same distance to which you're going to do that work and stare at it, you're allowed to blink. And as your mind starts to drift every once in a while to understand that's normal, but try and narrow your visual aperture and bring that into your visual field so that that's the most prominent thing. And then after doing that for 30 to 60 seconds, moving into the work that you're about to do and really encourage yourself to do that. In the same way, being well rested when you sleep, your autonomic nervous system that adjusts states of alertness and focus and calm works better than when you're sleep deprived. So if you're sleeping better, you're gonna focus better. The best thing that anyone can do for their mental health, physical health and performance in athletic or cognitive endeavors or creative endeavors is to make sure that you're getting enough quality sleep, enough of the time for you. And then of course, there are the pharmacologic tools, just enough caffeine, but not too much right? Um, we've talked about white noise, brown noise, music or no music, really varies, but it's very clear that binaural beats of 40 hertz can shift the brain into a, a heightened state of focus and cognition. So if you're going to use binaural beats, which should definitely be used with um, headphones, there are other frequencies that are interesting, but 40 hertz binaural beats seems to be the one that there's the most quality research on. And then I suppose the, the other thing for focus is um, workplace optimization. Mm -hmm. um, where you place your screen is important. Staring down at a screen is not going to be as effective as placing it at eye level or above you. When the eyes are up, literally, or when your eyes are directed forward or up, the brainstem centers for alertness are activated. When your eyes are down, it's actually, you're, you're sort of, it's like being pulled underwater a little bit in the autonomic arousal sense. There have been some really interesting studies that when people work in small compact spaces mm -hmm. or wear a hoodie or a hat, that can also improve focus, like blinders on a horse, but also analytic work or the kind of work where there's a correct answer that you're seeking is best supported by these kind of low ceiling environments. Whereas there's something called the cathedral effect, mm -hmm. which is when you work in an outdoor environment or a high ceiling environment, it lends itself to kind of pun intended, kind of loftier ideas and more creativity. And that probably has to do with the fact that there's a natural tendency, a reflex to expand your visual field in these high ceiling environments. Expansion of the visual field changes the way the brain works in the time domain. The best way to think about it is when you have a narrow focus, portrait mode on your phone, or you're very alert, you are fine slicing life in time. It's like a, um, think of it as a high frame rate like you're shooting in slow motion. When you have a, uh, when you dilate your, your view, you're taking bigger time bins. And the one way to just let this hopefully land home is that if you've ever had a really exciting day or podcast interview or experience of any kind, your system is flooded with dopamine and norepinephrine, alertness and motivation, all this excitement. It seems like it goes by very, very fast. And yet when you think back to that, it seems like a lot happened. This happened and that happened. Now think about waiting in the doctor's office in a blank waiting room with no interesting art on the walls. It feels like it goes by very, very slow. Dopamine and norepinephrine are all time low. And yet when you think back on that experience, it's as if nothing happened. 
because you were parsing time. And you mentioned being, you know, kind of uh, cramming for, for something. Well, you'll release a lot of adrenaline. And you'll, it is true you can get a lot done under pressure because of the way that you're slicing time. You don't actually have more time. It's that you're finally in a brain state that lends itself well to parsing information really quickly. Now, if we ramp up your level of stress enough, it's definitely a, you know, it's a more or less normal distribution. We get you stressed enough, it's hard to remember anything you're not parsing time well. But in that middle range, almost every study shows that the higher levels of autonomic arousal, meaning norepinephrine, ad adrenaline in your system, the more effective you are at things. 